Welcome back, everyone. This is a story our I team's been following since South Florida started to see more and more accidents between vehicles and Brightline trains. We're talking about train safety. There have been more than nine crashes since Brightline resumed operations in November of 2021. 58 deaths since Brightline began test runs in 2017, giving it the worst per mile fatality rate in the nation. So we're joined this morning by personal injury attorney Michael Pike. Who's a managing partner at Pike and Lessig and West Palm Beach? And you're to t here to talk to us, Michael, about train safety. Thanks for being here. You're welcome. You know, it's been interesting. I believe that the Sun Sentinel said that uh, out of all of these accidents, they they declared that it was all, um, you know, auto related. The fault of the driver of the automobile and or the fault of the pedestrian. So I think it's important to stop and think. When you're there at those tracks, you need to look both ways. Never assume that there's just one train. And make sure that you're at least 15 feet away from the flashing red lights and from the gates coming down. You know, never try to drive around the gate. Even this morning on Palm Beach Lakes Boulevard, when I was coming in to work, uh, somebody tried to drive around, around the gate, and they made it. But that's that's what's mainly causing these accidents. Yeah, we've People seen it on really video. People really need to take their time and, and not drive around these gates. They do, Michael. We've seen it on video with some of these incidents where you know it'll be caught on camera there. People, you know, trying to drive around the gates and beat the train. I want to talk a little bit more about who holds the responsibility here. I mean, is is it kind of a collective responsibility? Is it the trains? Is it the drivers? Is it pedestrians? You know, through your lens, you know, where does the responsibility lie? You know, I believe that the Bright Line has done a very good job of doing upgraded software um, warning systems. Uh, they have really spent a significant amount of money upgrading their warning system. Uh, at this juncture, and, and what I'm reading and what I'm seeing, I believe that it's pedestrian fault, and I believe that it's the driver of the automobile's fault for being distracted. I mean, we are distracted. We live by the phone. We text. And a lot of these people are just pressured for time, trying to get to work, trying to get past the stop bars. And they people need to take a break, take a step back, and just realize you're not going to get there faster than anyone else that's in front of you or behind you. I want to draw on your legal expertise here. You know, we talked about the safety precautions. Bright Line's already rolled out here, especially in light of these incidents. What do you anticipate Bright Line could do next to try and prevent any more accidents? You know. They could largen the the. Uh, they could make it the gates a little bit larger. You know the gates are are are, are standard and they are up to code, but you can make the gates a little bit larger and you could probably drop the gates a little bit earlier than when the train is approaching. So if you could drop the gates a little bit earlier, maybe that would help. But at the end of the day, I think even if you drop the gates earlier, people are going to be impatient. People are going to try to get around 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 the gates. They're going to. They're going to underestimate the speed of the train. Uh, they really, I think it's human error, and I think that drivers and pedestrians really need to take responsibility here and, and really be more careful. In full transparency here, Michael, I'm curious if you've represented anybody involved in any of these incidents, whether it be you know, in the past or recently. And, you know, is there any precedence being set here for, for how we're seeing these cases you know, handled? Well, I don't think there's any precedent being set. Um, the, the issue here is, yes, we have had train cases. No, they have not been involved with the Bright Line. There have been train cases ever since the Industrial Revolution where people have been getting hit by trains. And they, this is not a new thing. This is something that has been going on for, for tens and tens and hundreds of years. So, you know, I just think that people need to be uh, much more careful. I think people need to be cautious. Yes, there are times that there are the train operator and or the gates fail. That does happen. And liability will set with that train operator and or the, the, the county or the state that owns that, that particular railway. But all in all, the majority of these bright line accidents have been relegated to driver and to pedestrian fault. All right, Michael, thanks for being here. You know, whatever it takes so that we do not have any more of these incidents. Um, we appreciate your perspective today. Thank you.